So, good morning guys. Welcome back to the channel. If you are new around here, please think about uh, subscribing. It's completely free. Or if you're not new and you've watched some of the videos before and you're not subscribed, then uh, go ahead and hit the button. It's uh, completely free. All it will do is tell you when I've uploaded a new video, like today. So today we're on the 6155R. You might be thinking if you're a uh, regular viewer, Josh, you're always in a 6155R. Well, that's true, but we're not normally in this one. So this one is being lent to us whilst mine is away being repaired. So uh, we've got this from Mason's Kings. It is a pretty well full spec machine, auto quad gearbox. Uh, it's got a load of brackets. Um, it's a little bit different to ours, but I'll show you that as we go along. And uh, the job that we're going to be doing today is a bit of topping. So time of year that grass is going a bit stemmy, the quality's dropping and the cows get a bit more picky with what they eat. So we're going to tidy up behind them. Here is our topper. It's a McConnell SR15. Uh, oh yes, it's down there, right? SR15. Um, bat wing topper. Um, and it does a very good job of topping. Don't really ask you to do much more. Um, so we'll hook this all up. I've turned the tractor off so I can do all that safely. Uh, hook the hoses in and uh, we'll go and, go and give it a go. I'm going to go to a little field just down the road from the main yard before lunch and uh, get it all set how we want it and then um, we can go off do some of the cow ground after dinner. Got the machine all hooked up now to the tractor. I forgot to mention um, this topper runs on a thousand speed shaft so got to take out the power shaft on the back of the tractor just with a little circlip, swap it round and put it back in um, so they can have the 21 spline shaft on it. Um, so I think we're all ready. We'll take it down the field. When we get down, I've got to take that strap off and uh, see what happens. Right, so we're just on our way to the first field. I had to just stop and pick up some essentials. Uh, one of them was a tape measure, so I can measure the width to set it up on the guidance. And the other was a ginger cock spaniel who was at my feet. He likes to come for tractor rides now. So yeah, we've got a couple little bits around the farm. We'll go on top before lunch. At some point I want to do the margins around the outside of the um, arable fields. Just makes it easier for when the combine comes to open up the fields without tangling everything up in grass. Right, I'll just give you a little quick tour of this tractor. You would have seen it in the end of the last video if you watched it, but 6155R, load of brackets on it. Front linkage, no power shaft, it's always missing from the spec of ours really. It's on the same width tyres but the next rim size up so slightly taller. Got the new stock and cab on so you've got a panoramic door this side, big one, small door the other side and then a big glass sunroof for a load of work. And then there's the dog. A really nice track though, really really smooth, plenty of power. Obviously the different gearbox probably have slightly more power from the auto quad than you do the uh, direct drive. But uh, I need to take that strap apart anyway. Right, so the, the wings will be able to fold down now on the spool. Just put the strap on that little hook there, it's not going to go anywhere. And uh, yeah, this is the first bit I've come to do, so it's all these rushes and nettles and stuff here. Take up this block, there's a few docks over there we can whack. We'll tidy the place up a bit. Right, so inside the cab, very similar to our tractor. I've uh, got a slightly smaller screen in a slightly different place. But uh, auto quad gearbox. Because it's got a loader, it's got this nice joystick, so you could actually choose any of these buttons to do any functions you want really and um, so we'll be using that in a minute um, no command arm so power shaft button there linkage and auto steer all sort of in this area um, spools and then you've got an array of buttons here for various things so you've got your entertainment system your fan um, four-wheel drive and diff lock um, got a bit more radio stuff down here your beacons and lights and then all these buttons do um, various pages on the screen. So if we want control, we'll press that one. That brings up the control setup screen. All right, so what we want to do here is change a couple of these so that um, the topper can go up and down and the wings can go down on various buttons. So what we'll do is we'll put this one, we'll put a spool, what have we got them in? I've got them in two and three. So if we put that one in two, so now if I put activate custom, which is that one, and then put a button here to make the joystick active, 
I go side to side. So it's got like a, um, a fail safe lock here. So you have to have this pushed open. So it clicks and it goes green. And if I press side to side, one way or the other, the topper will go up and down. I can also assign them to the buttons on the top here. And uh, those ones you don't have to have this bit open. They'll just work anyway. If we go on this one here and put it on spool three. Oh, wrong one. Fold our wings down. I'm actually going to remove that though, just because, um, remove assignment, it'll be easier to have the up and down on that one, so that'll be spool two. If I put the spool three back on a manual one, or an electric one there, I can put it in float, so the wings will sort of do their own thing, and then I can have up and down on the joystick. It's pretty cool. Right. Let's give it a go. Well, that, you can play tennis on that now. Clean that up lovely. So I just fold it up, I'm gonna head back and have my lunch. I haven't put the strap on, because when I go back to the yard, I'll fold the wings down. It's a bit safer. Um, I might even sharpen them up before I go to the next place. But yeah, hell of a job done. Do a bit more filming uh, in the next place. We've got loads of rushes to knock back. Um, so that'll be something for you guys to see. I don't know if you guys can see behind me. But I've got Dr. Jones following me. I'm doing that thing where I'm driving really slow just to annoy him. We've had lunch. I'm just heading over to Rowden where the heifers are. I'm going to move them out of the field they're in. Which is full of rushes. Really, Probably the worst field of rushes we've got on the farm. Um, I'll move them and then top the field. I've got the drone with me as well, which I've actually remembered to pick up for once, so I might be able to get the drone in the air as well. And uh, when this tractor turned up and I saw it had the auto quad gearbox, I was like, ah, oh, that's a bit of a backward step. But actually, other than on the road, when you actually have to change it manually, you can do it all from the little joystick on the end of the armrest. Um, Brilliant, it feels more powerful, it does exactly the same speed, I think, as mine. Um, yeah, 53, 54k, fly along the road. So it's a very, very nice place to be. There is our group of heifers, there's 32 of those in there. Um, we'll go in that gateway in a minute. They're in a field there called agroforestry because there's like belts of trees being planted there. Uh, quite a few years ago. Some of them are actually going to be cut down because they're all diseased. They have ash dieback. But um, hopefully those heifers will follow me this way. We've got another field about the same size just over here that I want them to go into. So we're going to open that gate first. Come on! Come on! Come on! There's a little narrow belt of ground here that they don't really tend to come in. So we might run over this with the topper. The problem is I can't turn around very sharp with the topper um, because of the wide angle shaft and also you end up rubbing the tires on it. Which I don't really want to do in a tractor that's not ours, but we might leave this bit. Obviously you would have seen in the last video we took the balls out. So hopefully these are all in calf. We'll be scanning uh, towards the end of August. So we know exactly what is and isn't in calf. There's always one or two that aren't. Hopefully the heifers, you want as many of them as you can in calf because that's your next step of genetics, isn't it? And uh, supposedly your best breeding animals. Come on then girls, come on, come on. Well, the heifers are playing hard to get at the moment, so they'll stay in there. I'll leave their gate open. If I shut a couple gates across here, leave that one open down there. Um, if they want to, they can wander out whilst I'm topping. Yeah. We'll just do that in a minute. Another cool feature of this tractor, twin beacons. Try not to hit anything.
Right. I believe you're in. Right, let's do farming. The rush bashing has commenced. I thought the heifers would scram as soon as I started the machine up, but actually they are um, sort of picking over the bits that the machines left behind. Which is fine, if they want to stay there, they can. No rush to move them. They're doing a nice job. The grass that they sort of left here has all gone to seed and stemmy, and the heifers just don't seem to pick the stuff up, so I've got the thing set fairly low. So we're really mullering the rushes and the thistles, and taking the rubbish grass as well. It's a fairly big field as well. Six and a half hectares, I think. That looks wet in there. I don't want to go in. You don't want to have to be pulled out on a Friday afternoon, do you? Really mulling them back. Rushes just hate being topped repeatedly. So if you keep whacking them, eventually they'll go away and they won't come back. We've got another field that we weed wiped. Um, and that seems to have killed them as well, so different ways of dealing with rushes. In a minute I'll do a couple rounds and I'll set up some AB lines and then um, I've got the drone, I'll stick that in the air and you can see uh, where we are and what we're doing. I could be who you want cause I know that I need to be happy too And then things turn to dust when I bluff just to mess up and tell the truth all I hear is an echo, turn the words of say to ammo Sleeping on the side of the bed though, weeks of gone can't let go I go crazy when you call my name, make me lose my game When you call my name, I go crazy, cause I can't escape When you call my name, when you call my name Right, we're trucking on. Hopefully you enjoyed the little bit of drone footage yet. 
I brought my drone with me, but I forgot to charge it, so I didn't have that much time to fly it before it decided it wanted to land itself. Um, you might have seen I've got a lot of weaving and dodging of things to do. It's not as straightforward as just driving up and down in a straight line, unfortunately. If only it was that simple. I can't decide whether I'm better to like back up and do a three-point turn each time I get to the end of a run, or do a little circuit round something. See what we're going into is really thick rushes. And how it leaves it, I've probably got it slightly too low there, to be honest. But we're able to travel quite a good speed and still muller them. I bag off for there a minute. Let's make it a racket. Put it down there instead. Could slow down a gear. It's a really thick bit, that might do a better job. I just play with the level on this uh, spool here. If I want to go a bit lower, I pull it back towards me. Raise it back. Push it away. It should be a really, really good job done for these rushes. Now, how many of you, like me, cannot leave? A rush gun standing like that. That would do my nutting. That was left there. I've got to go back and get it. OCD at its finest. But uh, we're cracking on. We've done a big chunk there. Sort of got a load of trees in now to wiggle in and out of. Um, there's a patch there that I'll do in a minute. I'll do all the big patches first. And then I can always come back next week and have another go because we've got loads of topping to do. We're fast enough to get the job done, but slow enough to do a good job whilst you're doing it. And that is Muller in them. Big wins. Find my way back up to uh, that patch. Get as tight as we can to the trees without hitting them. Get all that lot. We're rearing it a few. I gave it a good go coming up through that little gap. I got as far as about there and I couldn't get between those two trees so I had to fold up but they're just slightly too close together otherwise it would have been a perfect job. Got a nice wide avenue doing here at the minute. Nice big area to turn around on the end as well. I was going to leave a bit just there because I did evict a pheasant and three chicks from this patch here. And they went in there so I thought I'd leave them. Two bits out there that I've missed, I will go and get on my return leg in a minute. Can't be leaving rushes behind. It's going to look a hell of a map, that is, by the time I've done squiggles everywhere and bits and pieces. Hello there, heifers! Hope you're all in calf. Yes. What are you doing there? And they're off! Going in the front and not out the back. Very nice. No, we're too wide. It's no good. I'll have to do them going up and down the other way. Right, guys, I am on the home straight. One little pass to do along the bottom of this bit of wood. Or one and a half passes even. Knock back as much of these biggest as we can. And uh, that may be done. I've done the rest of the field. John and Craig popped over to uh, check on progress. Decided we'll leave the topper at Rowden and then um, that way next week we can have a bit of a campaign round here. Because Rowden's a bit of a wetter farm, we do tend to get more rushes over here. Right guys, so that is us done. We've just unhooked the pipes and the power shaft on the top of there. Stay there uh, until Monday. We'll get on and follow the cows around and do a lot of topping over here at Rowden. Thank you very much for watching. Please let me know in the comments what you think of this tractor. I'm really enjoying driving it. If anyone from Mason's is watching, uh, feel free to keep ours. We'll keep this one. That'd be ideal. Um, <laughs> no, I'm only joking. It's nice to drive it, actually. I said earlier with the auto quad gearbox, I was thinking oh this is a bit of a backward step but actually I 
I'm surprised by myself that I enjoy it. Um, Craig's been telling me how good they are. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised by that tractor. But hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It's completely free and you'll get notified of when my videos go live. If you want to see anything else that goes on here at Northwick, there's a load of social media links down in the description, um, as well as a link to merch, hats, hoodies, and shirts. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you on another video very soon. Cheerio.